All right. That's great. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to today's stand up. So just a quick icebreaker. Can you just tell us in one word, one word, how was your weekend? Was it restful? Was it fun? Was it not a weekend? Like just one word quickly. Like let's use one minute for this one. I'm not seeing anything popping in the chat box. How was your weekend? How did you manage to uh, to take this break? Hello. Okay, I'm seeing restful. It was all right. Exciting. Okay, Abraham. That's amazing. Okay, it was great. It was great. It was relaxed. Okay, that's super amazing. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. Yeah, we like to hear that because with the intensiveness of the training, we always we always recommend that you use your weekend, like you use your Sunday just to rest so that you can get your full energy back in the following week. So welcome to today's stand up. We are going to go into our weekly presentations with Yabi. Yabi is already here with us, so I'm going to pass it to him and then um, he directs us on how we can do it better. Yabi, over to you. Uh, just, sorry, like, have you continued because I'm on the road? So I'm, I will just be in the office in a couple of minutes, so I'll start talking then. Yeah. Okay, that is great. We are still are going to be starting. Can we have the queue? Five sharp people who have their presentations ready with their PowerPoints. Can we have the queue? You can raise your hand. Let's see. We haven't had gotten one on the queue yet. Hello. Hello. Let's see sharp people, sharp people. You have to raise your hand, uh, not a reaction. Or if you do not have your presentation with you, can you share with us like why in the chat box? Because we joined the stand up knowing that or oh, every Monday of every week we do presentations um, regarding the technical challenges we did in the past week. What is the question? So we are about to do the presentations around um, the technical challenges we did in the past week. I'm, I'm checking if this has been shared with you or not, because I'm sure I saw that you received that announcement in the past week, or week uh, two. It has been shared. So, yeah, so not tonight, maybe just like, yeah. Um, I think okay. maybe you could just say why that it's the case and why we need every day, every Monday, why like the presentation and what we expect. All right. Okay, so uh, I'll just explain why we require this presentation. Also, like, uh, you need to have that communication skill in order for you uh, to get, for example, let's say you are an, on an interview and uh, you are required to explain some of your 
projects sort of. there has to be a way in order for you to understand you have to explain it in, in, in a very short amount of time but in a very concise uh, in, a, in a very concise way so one way or the other you have to actually understand that it is required it's not an option i think so for example if there, if there are around 2018 or 29 27 trainees here so we require all of you to present because that is a must to do so, yeah. and also that will help us uh, tell who actually understands the challenge more and if you are not explaining it well so there, there's something wrong so either you don't understand the challenge well or you, know, you actually um, haven't tried enough to explain it well so throughout the, the 12 weeks you will uh, you will and uh, you will try to explain more and also you, try, you will have to try to do more. So I think let's, let's start then with people who have raised the hand. It's one that, you know, it, it is not an option that you have to speak. So it's just, you have to do it. Either we call you by a name or you raise it. If you raise it, that's that's good otherwise we'll call so let's start from people who are already raised so pascaline just maybe you can call names and then they can present all right we have the first person on the queue um shamil <clears throat> hello uh, so uh, i was i was actually trying to uh, set up uh, but uh, internet connection was slow so until i set up the next person can take if they are ready Okay, Shamil, if you still need more time, then we can go to the second person and then you'll come next. Okay, great. Thank you. Time scan. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, actually, um, I come here to apologize. Uh, I had a blocker of a uh, machine problem. Uh, my, my computer is malfunction and uh, I had a, uh, an incoordinate with a uh, family emergency so I didn't actually finish the, the, uh, the project so I don't have much to present I just want to say this on the, on the way go I'm, I'm currently working on it and uh, I'll make sure to submit all of, all of the deliverables once I get all the blo blockers fixed. Okay. 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 okay, Tim Skian, uh, how about Johannes? Can I confirm that you have your presentation ready? Okay, Johannes left. Abubakar, you can go ahead if you're ready now. Sorry, I misclicked. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, Johannes, go ahead first. Then Abubakar, you'll follow. Okay. You can see my screen, right? Yes, we can. Okay. So my name is Johannes Tashome, and today I will present the customer insight analysis on Teleco dataset. Uh, I based my analysis on four aspects, user overview, user engagement, user experience in the customer satisfactions. 
So out of the analysis I made on user overview, uh, I will present you the top handsetting top manufacturer. So from the from this chart we can see that from the top ten handset, Huawei and Apple made most of them. And if we look at the top manufacturer, uh, Apple lead and Samsung and Huawei follow. And in my customer engagement analysis, I was trying to look at the customer engagement on the service. So the matrix I used was session frequency, how often our user interact with our service, session duration, the average length of time customers spend per session and the traffic volume, the data uploaded and downloaded per customer in the session. So from this program, we can see that most of the sessions are very short, short. Most of our customers use the service for short period of time. And uh, here I said that we are gonna use user engagement experience and satisfaction. In order to get the customer satisfaction, uh, the customer satisfaction score we, we will get from the engagement and experience. So before doing that, we will normalize in the clusters both engagements and uh, experience. And the reason we normalize this is because the data have different scales. If you look at here, the session frequency and duration or the traffic volume will have different scales. So we need to normalize the data. So this has the based on the cluster, this has the session frequency for the total downloaded data. So uh, cluster two have used uh, uh, the, our, our service a lot frequent than cluster one and uh, cluster zero, and it's followed by cluster one, then cluster zero. So same goes for experience analysis. First, for the uh, customer experience, the key matrix I used was the retransmitted data volume, the latency, the average download speed, and the handsets, because these four key matrices will affect the customer's experience. So from here, we can see that most of our data belongs to cluster zero, followed by one and two. And from our analysis, cluster zero exhibits the worst experience among customers, which means that most of our data sets or most of our customers belongs uh, have worst experience on the service. And this has the top and satisfied customer. This has a, the customer's ID. So from our satisfaction analysis, this has the key insight I got. 25% of the data have zero satisfaction score. 50% of our percentile or customer have 0 0.06 and 75% of customers have satisfaction score. 0.24, which means that majority of our customer have below average satisfaction with the service. So before, sorry, 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 sorry. In the earlier one, no. like the sum is not one like hundred. What happens like in the satisfaction high, 25, 50, and then seventy-five? Is that just because it's quantile? Yeah, it's percentile. Okay. Good. So before uh, going to the recommendation. I would like to present my, the limitation of this analysis. The first one is we mainly focus on the satisfaction score, which does capture the full range of individual user experience. So we need to have deep analysis on other factor to have a good conclusion. And the second one is time. Limited time for the analysis might have prevented us exploring all the potential factors. So out of the analysis we had in customer satisfaction and experience analysis, we can see that most customers experience dissatisfaction with the service and most of our customers have worst experience with the service. So the recommendation is based on the current analysis, uh, it's not recommended to acquire this company at this time because the low satisfaction score suggests us a high risk of customer churn. Thank you. Excellent presentation, really well, really short, fantastic.
except in your final one why yeah. would you like because now you have like uh, dissatisfied users and yeah. this lowers the company's price and if you acquire it now and increase the satisfaction you would make profit so why why wouldn't why would you just think like this is not a good time to actually acquire the company uh, i thought about that one but uh, the the brand of the company might uh, will have a negative impact on the the service that's why i said there will be high risk of customer churn so acquiring this time will uh, have a, a negative impact okay. the negative brand like most of the customer had negative uh, or worst satisfaction score meaning uh, it's have a negative effect on the brand okay good thanks i think this is excellent so we can go to the next one thank you Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you. So, who's next? Uh, okay, Shamil Abubakar. Okay, can you? <coughs> sorry, can you see my presentation? Okay. Uh, so, uh, my name is Aboka Shamil. So, I will be uh, presenting the user analysis for Telco. So, uh, there will be an introduction what we have been doing for the past week, uh, such as user engagements, experience, analysis, and insights. So, we, the purpose of this uh, analysis is to get the user engagement experience and satisfaction uh, and make actionable insights uh, if the telco if telco is worth buying or not so we have done a lot of analysis uh, for those the key features are uh, the duration uh, the id user id social media engagement such as youtube netflix google those are the data that uh, that have in the column so for user engagement so we actually how like this how much the user is engaged so we actually did uh, the session how much session is uh, has the user been so most of the things were mentioned previously so those are session durations traffic and the frequency of sessions so that gives us insight into the user engagement and the experience would be tcp transmission like how much of the data is being transmitted average round trip time so uh, if it is larger the user might have a bad experience because networks issues uh, are very throughput uh, those also could okay so those also could give us insight to the user experience so for satisfaction is the overall uh, aggregates of uh, user experience and engagement so the more engaged the user is and the better their experience the better their satisfaction okay so that would give us insight onto those behaviors so we have analyzed different kinds so univariate bivariate analysis uh, so from those analysis, like uh, the ones that are that stand out are gaming, uh, like have positive relationship with uh, other applications. So most of the our users are into gaming and Netflix, I guess. So uh, actually, it is sorry. So the uh, non-graphical analysis. So the, we have actually calculated the range, the variance, interquantiles for the data so moving on to the cluster so we have actually made the L1 analysis for the to get the ideal uh, k for for using an elbow method so from the graph you can see that between two and three is the ideal so it, it, it gets flat after that so the inertia would be uh, almost the same 
So optimal K would be three or four. So we actually chose three. So for the cluster analysis, the total, the total duration for a medium engagement is uh, between 85,000 milliseconds or 85 seconds. So uh, the, their download traffic is between 90 megabyte and 8 GB. So and sessions go from one up to 18. So uh, those are medium engagement. Low engagements are below the medium ones. So at the maximum of 2.3 GBs uh, and the session between one and four uh, sessions. So uh, there is a high also engagement cluster. So those are the really huge in the outlier ones. So they have as much as 460 total download traffic. So as much as 500 to two. So uh, the top 10 ones engage customers. Uh, there is one customer that actually have <laughs> like outlier. So uh, the, the customer with ID this and it's more active on all uh, social medias and gaming platforms. So these are the top 10 most engaged customers. Uh, uh, what are the top categories for engagements? So, so gaming, other, and YouTube are top three. So <coughs> again, the ID is outlier. Uh, so for dimensionality reductions, we have identified actually 23 columns to be uh, the efficient ones in predicting the generalizing the data. So user experience, I have, as I mentioned earlier, is on RT, uh, round trip time and throughput. Uh, user experience on devices, this would be uh, the retransmission. So devices which have Huawei uh, B something. So they have 60% uh, of uh, TCP retransmission. So the limitation on this uh, uh, Data analysis are the columns have large percentage of missing values, and we have actually had to drop them. More than fifty percent of it had to be dropped. Uh, the data has no timestamp, so records might be old, not actually real time value or at least closer. We don't know about that. So there is there should be also voice records for telecom to actually say. Uh, it is worth buying because there is also a voice channel. Uh, those, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, the recommendations, uh, I, I say the company is worth buying with some alterations and some, uh, some other data analysis. So, from the current data is actually worth buying. So more hand says should be stocks for gaming and uh, the largest of the data are for, for example, says other traffic. So there should be a system in place with that or a better system that can identify what others to clearly identify their domain, their uh, device identification or their initial domain. Uh, instead of saying other, what they are, what they actually are. So, uh, m since most of it is gaming, so it should be stopped. I think this is it. Excellent. Right. I, yeah. Okay. So I think that was, uh, sorry, I, I had, I was distracted in the middle, but I was, one of my questions was like how you would have finished because like your summary looked so much, uh, but you managed to finish it at least um, in the time that I expected you would. And so that was great. So maybe just then let's go in the interest of time. Let's go to the next one. So. Abdus uh, yeah, okay. So we already have the list. So yeah, can I can I proceed? Yeah, yeah, proceed. 
Please confirm if you can see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so this is a, a data-driven ana analysis of a telecommunication company, which is Tel Telco. So in this uh, analysis, we are basically trying to uncover uh, potential growth through uh, customer insights. So what we are going to be looking at in this uh, presentation is introduction to the uh, company, overview of the analytical task. We're also going to be looking at customer uh, customers' overview analysis and also user engagement analysis, experience analysis, and satisfaction analysis. Then finally, we make a conclusion and recommendation. So this is a brief overview of the company. Uh, the company under uh, we are you know looking at is Telco, a leading mobile service provider in uh, the Republic of uh, Perf. I, I can't really pronounce this Perfkakia. Telco has been operating in the telecommunication industry for over a decade, based on the project brief that was given, offering a wide range of uh, mobile service to its customers, with a focus on innovation and customer satisfaction. So Telco has established itself as a prominent player in the market, catering to diverse uh, customer needs and preference. So basically, the first thing I did here was to check the top 10 uh, answered users by customers, which uh, is making Huawei the uh, the leading uh, answer type. So then if you look at this analysis, if you look at the first 10, uh, uh, most likely Huawei focus on one particular product because they are only leading the sharks without uh, any other appearance in the top 10. So the shark displays the top 10 assets uh, used by customers. So basically the Huawei B5286 stands out as, as the most popular. It's uh, 19,752 occurrences, and iPhones such as iPhone and iPhone 6 also feature prominently. So this data suggests a strong preference for Huawei and Apple devices of, uh, among the customers. So here I'm looking at uh, the top three asset manufacturers using a pie chart. So this chart displays uh, the top 10 assets users by customer. Yeah, and Huawei still make uh, the top chart followed by uh, Samsung, then Apple. So basically, these are the most three uh, asset manufacturers in the data set. So here, I'm basically looking at the top five assets made by Apple, and we have the uh, Apple iPhone 6X, followed by Apple iPhone 6, then over till it gets to the last one with their frequencies. So also here, I'm also looking at the, basically, I'm trying to understand the, uh, the users and the way they use the product and the manufacturers, basically. So here, I'm looking at the top five handsets made by Samsung, which you can see here. Uh, Samsung uh, top five handsets comprises family Galaxy series smartphones, including the Galaxy S8, uh, Galaxy A5, then followed by J5 and J3. Then lastly, we have S7. So here, I'm trying to look at the top five handsets made by Huawei. So we can see that the the particular Huawei product that was stopping the shot is obviously the most produced phone by Huawei. So this is to you know is an insight to tell us that Huawei is basically focusing on uh, one particular uh, product and probably neglecting every other one. Yeah. So here I'm trying to look at the relationship between every social media and the and the data, the DL plus zero data. So this is just a correlation chart showing the relationship between uh, the UL and DL uh, among the social media we have. So yeah, I'm trying to get the engagement metric across uh, the users and yeah, with by their session frequency and total session duration, total download data and total customer, uh, total uplo uploaded upload data. So this is these are the top ten customers across all the uh, all the metrics. So yeah, I'm trying to get the top most three used application. So gaming DL happens to be the most used, followed by other DL. Then lastly, Netflix. Then here I'm trying to get the sum of our square distance to the closest centroid, which should be used in satisfaction uh, prediction uh, against the number of cluster. So we can. It's obvious that from one to three is from one to, well, from one to three is uh, basically where the most engagement is. 
then over from three to ten or oh, from four to ten basically is looking like a flat uh flat curve so this side displays the square distance to the closest central are, are against the cluster which was used in clustering users it shows that the higher the higher the cluster the lower the distance central so here i'm basically looking at the top 10 users per ccp value and basically these are the top 10 users based on their tcp values also here i'm looking at the top 10 users per throughput and these are the top 10 users uh value represent the largest value of average bearer throughput or uh, throughput for download measured in kilobits per second so yeah this basically i'm trying to get a data here that shows the users with engagement and experience score based on their clusters so uh, conclusion and recommendation show our comp uh, comprehensive analysis of uh, the customer demographic and uh, engagement metric user experience and satisfaction level several ins uh, key insights uh, have emerged so we have the particular Huawei product is the most used phone by customer so Huawei we produce more than one product but this particular product is mostly used on none of the other product features in the top most in the top 10 most used phone Apple produces a lot of competitive phone, which takes the most of the top 10 phone used by customers. The top three manufacturers of phone are Apple, topping the list, followed by Samsung and Huawei. The relationship between different social media and the data volume generated I at uh, 0 to 0 0.5 of the CCP UL plus DL. Then the mostly used app is gaming DL. This is uh, the the there is a this is a the this is a lot of engagement between there's a lot of engagement between users and different engagement metrics like total download data, total upload data, and session frequency. Categorizing users into different clusters to know the category they belong and their engagement, experience, and satisfaction score. So these are my recommendations on, on growth potential. Based on uh, my analysis, we recommend uh, a positive growth potential for the company and it's worth buying here are the reasons. There's a strong customer engagement. The user review, the, uh, the analysis reveals that the company has a solid base with high level of engagement. This indicates a strong foundation for growth and expansion opportunities. Uh, favorable user experience. Despite some areas of for improvement in network performance, overall user metrics are positive. By addressing network issue and enhancing service of, of, or offering, the company can further improve. Then we also have a lot of market opportunities. The identification of key customer segments, such as young professional and gamers, present lucrative markets or opportunities. So these are my justification. Uh, our, my, our recommendation is grounded in data-driven insights derived from the from thorough analysis of the uh, customer engagement metrics and user experience. So by uh, addressing identified areas for improvement and capitalizing on market opportunities, the company can shown itself for uh, sustainable goods and success in the competitive telecommunication industry so these are my limitation data policy incomplete data yeah, missing values and all then data uh, consistency also the analytical technique uh, the use of simplest uh, simpl simplistic model may have overlooked complex relationship within the data potentially leading to a simplified conclusion then also there are some assumptions uh, due to time and yeah time limitation then we have reliability and validity we have some bias in the data uh, or analysis approach could skew the result and impact the reliability of, of my findings so these are my references yeah thank you excellent 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 Abdul Salam. i think i like the way that you break down also your assumptions um and the limitations so that's good um but how for how much did you prepare and how long did it take you so in terms of timing yeah yeah it took me like the whole week i literally did not have time for any other thing basically and i i believe i could have, i could have done more if i had you know more time yeah but in, in a way like so i think you know overall that's good because you convinced us you sold your idea that's uh, the key component that he sold your idea to that you have done all the best um, from the time that you have. But just just only one single comment would be to me to think of like how long, you know, how many slides, how long do you want to talk? Uh, and then so that you can prepare. For example, if it is an interview, people might 
be less interested if it gets longer. I mean, currently, the way that you do it, it's it's good. So in terms of presentation, it's good. good. But just take the time that you're given as well as um, in the future, take into account so that you can focus more and then reduce time when, when you come. But overall, it was good. So that's... Uh, all right, okay. thank you. So the, then Jabez. Okay. Uh, good morning. Morning. Um, so the, I'm uh, trying to set up the uh, presentation. Uh, Uh, can you see my presentation? Yeah, it's coming, but not. I think we. I see only your 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 black screen. Others can see. So I don't see your presentation. Yeah. Okay. The same as others. So maybe to share. Yeah. Can yeah. you see it okay. now? Yeah, yeah. it comes yeah. now. Sorry. Okay. So, uh, so we are doing the user uh, uh, analysis on the telecommunication industry. In the company, we are doing it is on telco. So this is the content. So we have the targets. What we have to do. Then the user interview, then the user engagement analysis, experience analysis, then satisfactory analysis and limitations, and then the conclusion. So the target is that we want to evaluate if the if uh, telco is worth buying based on the user engagement analysis, user experience analysis, and user satisfactory analysis. So to uh, overview the data, we are uh, doing the, the user analysis based on XDR uh, data record. So we are doing it on uh, 1,000, about 1,000, 100,000 uh, unique users. And we have about uh, 133,000 unique sessions. And we have about 73 uh, terabyte session traffic. And uh, we have about 4,000 hours of session duration. And we are doing it in between uh, these days. It, it is uh, uh, 0404 2029 up to uh, 2904 uh, 2019 so it's about 25 days that the xdr record covers so the based on the overall analysis when doing the cumulative experience variance we can say that 50 percent of uh, the principal components together can uh, explain about the 100 percent of the variance in the xdr uh, record and as you see uh, i uh, plotted the uh, pc analysis on a 3d plane and we can see that uh, most of the uh, values are in the principal components two and three um, area so when it comes to the engagement analysis we see that three uh, futures are identifying the engagement analysis that means we use three uh, futures that, that so that we can decide if the users are engaged these are the session frequency session duration and the session traffic so session frequency and uh, have a positive impact that if the, the session, we have a low session frequency, then it means that user is engaging. Uh, the duration is greater, then we know that it, the user is engaging. And if the, we have uh, a lot of traffic, then we know that the, the user is engaging. So based on that, we have uh, this. That is, we have about uh, 50 to 70.5 number of sessions, which, is, which means a uh, connection to the telephone network. And we have about five to three hours of each session's duration. And we have about 6.5 to 8 GB session traffic, which is the, the download and upload of uh, data. So when it comes to the, the cluster, when we cluster the data, uh, when the, or, uh, the, depending on the user, we can uh, have these uh, three clusters because we use uh, k-means clustering and we uh, set the value for k to, to, to three. 
So we, we can see that, but there is um, uh, two clusters mainly. Um, uh, and the other one is, uh, we are using two features, uh, three features as I said before, the session frequency, session duration, and session traffic. So we have uh, different clusters based on when we, based on these features. So when uh, uh, we do that, for example, the session duration based, the session traffic, we can see that there is a lot of traffic, session traffic, and also uh, there is uh, a session uh, duration. So uh, we can see that it's uh, a little bit related. So most sessions, uh, users which have the most session traffic also have a lot of session duration. So when we see based on the applications, we can see uh, this. So in, uh, email and the social media users uh, have about zero to four, 40 megabytes. Uh, top users like the uh, Google uh, platform have about zero to 140 megabytes. And also we have uh, uh, YouTube and Netflix and the others, gaming and the others. So when we uh, see the top three, we can see that gaming uh, and other applications and YouTube are the most used applications by the uh, telco users. So uh, using the elbow analysis, we can see that as I mentioned before, there is a basically two clusters. It means we can uh, group the users into two ways or, or into two groups. So K, uh, two K, setting K as two or classifying the users we, uh, into two groups is the most uh, um, uh, impor important or it's visible. So the other one is the experience analysis. We uh, can say that. Just may maybe to ask you here. Okay. Others got a different uh, elbow curve, and why? Why do you think the case? It's like. Okay, maybe uh, yeah, the data processing part. Uh, that is how we process the data, how we uh, identify the uh, uh, MPT values and also how we uh, uh, did on the outliers. Maybe that uh, affects our uh, key values. But yeah, may maybe that's just where you guys should, especially those who got different results, it's good to reconcile just because we it, it would help. Like, you know, what, what makes it so different? Let's proceed. Okay. So when it comes to the experience analysis, we, we are using three features. That is average TCP. So average TCP, the high average TCP, it means that we have a positive experience. And average RTT, it means that if we have a high uh, average RTT, it means it's a negative experience because it means it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's taking longer to, to get the data. And average output. So this higher higher average output means that it's a positive experience. So based on that, we did I did the experience analysis. The first one is throughout output means, and we have this top uh, ten uh, experiences based on uh, handset type. Uh, and I have also uh, based on RTT, we can see that they are top uh, ten, uh, which means the uh, negative experience based on uh, the handset type, and uh, as we can see, that also there is a top average TCP per customers. As we can see, it's about uh, uh, 3,800 and 4,000 megabytes per second. So it means that it's a uh, it's a large uh, TCP per per customer. The top ten, uh, and we can see that also RTT experiences. This is the top ten, which means the negative experience. The top ten negative experiences. And uh, we can see also the true output. Uh, so when it comes to uh, satisfactory analysis, we, uh, we are doing, uh, I am doing it based on, uh, uh, sorry, it's not satisfactory, but experience analysis. The average true output in base RTT, we have uh, three clusters. As we can, as we can, as we can see, uh, we have most of the users are uh, below uh, 20,000 RTT, which means uh, most users have, uh, it takes most users a little bit time to get uh, the data. So it's a positive experience. And you see that the green one uh, uh, the, or the graph extends to the right. So it means the average output is long and most of 
um, uh, users are uh, have uh, aver increased average through output. Then they, uh, we can see that over also average TCP with average RTT and also average TCP and average through output. And when it comes to satisfactory analysis, we are using the, both the engagement and the experience score. And, uh, and to calculate the, uh, this score, you, we are using PDN distance. So we normalize it, then ap apply k-means. Then uh, we are doing the centroid distance. Uh, we are calculating the centroid distance. So we have this top 10 uh, satisfactory uh, top 10 customers that, have, uh, that are satisfied. We are using the mean between the engagement score and the experience score to find the satisfactory score. So we have these top 10 satisfied customers. So the end, this is I'm trying to uh, model the, using a simple regression model. So uh, I think I'm uh, having a hard time because as you can see, the, the red one is the uh, perfect prediction, but I, I have, I'm having the bottom one, the, the blue one. So it means we ha I have a zero slope. Uh, this means there is no direct relationship between the features I selected, which is the independent variable and the dependent variable. I choose the session frequency, session duration, and session traffic to predict uh, the satisfactory analysis. As you can see, it's uh, almost the uh, slope is zero. It means that they have no direct relationship. Uh, this is my finding. If I had time, I would use another uh, feature to predict, but this is uh, that I found. Uh, concerning the limitation, the XDR record is only for 25 days and there is no information about the user analytics or we don't know much about the user, their age, uh, what, what they are doing or uh, details about the user. Uh, so it's uh, a little bit uh, hard uh, maybe to, uh, it's better if you had that information and there is no information about competitive telecommunication companies and we have no uh, financial data about we are only using the user in, user uh, data to uh, say it, it's worth buying or not. So that's the limitation. So when I draw the conclusion, I uh, found that uh, most users have uh, uh, good engagement uh, and also have a good experience. So uh, when we are those two, it means that they have a good, or uh, they are satisfied. So it, I think we can, I can argue that it's, Telco is worth buying. We, we can do much. Uh, based on the findings uh, above, but uh, for now, user engagement and based on user experience and user satisfactory, I think it's uh, worth to buy. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Great. I mean, as you can see, it's evident for everyone. You know, the same data, different analysis, lead sometimes to different conclusion, and most of the time, those things are. Of course, sometimes it's elections, but mostly sometimes issues. So that's why, you know, if this was our life dependent on it, you know, we would see like how critical uh, certain selections and choices are, as well as also, of course, ensuring that there aren't obvious mistakes. So I think my recommendation is the people who disagree, let, let it be in two sides and maybe just check um, and have maybe in the later afternoon a community session or some other session, maybe just let's have a debate and by just having quick checks, you know, what actually is happening. Uh, this, this could be just a fun activity because like some analysis led to buy it and others don't buy it. Some are, it's, and therefore just maybe, you know that that could be something because i mean we don't have time unfortunately that's why we don't get into the details but this is something interesting and it should be clear to everyone selections and certain decisions choices and obvious sometimes silly mistakes are just the natural phenomena and one has to be really learn from them uh, because now you have comparative analysis by other trainees who actually did it and found completely different on opposite um, result. Um, okay, but let's proceed. Um, and that was good, at least within the kind of the presentation, within the finding. But I think knowing the elbow, like being dropping for two like that, usually you should suspect, you should be suspicious something is wrong, as well as also when you don't have that relationship in your plot, it should also tell you something about Okay, maybe there is some silly mistake. 
Um, normally, those are indicators. But yeah, okay. Um, Hillary. Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have um, these are uh, we are talking about telco acquisition. Uh, so we have the agent. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, I mean, yeah. Um. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, Okay, uh, so I'm presenting about that telco acquisition. So here we have the uh, the agenda of the presentation. Uh, so first we'll have the introduction, then we'll have the user overview. Uh, this will analyze the customer behavior, the user engagement, uh, user experience, user satisfaction, and all these will be able to uh, to analyze uh, how user. Uh, the, the data about the user to be able to make uh, better uh, decisions. So for for the introduction to the company, uh, we know that Telco is a service provider and uh, uh, it uh, provides uh, uh, provide service to providers and we are going to analyze the Telco's data to identify opportunities for acquisition. So, we are going the first time we are starting use overview analysis. Uh, here we are dealing with uh, the the mis the different services about the user, mostly about the applications usage behavior of the user, the patterns, and uh, the data during the one month aggregation. Uh, so we'll 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 we we'll look at this to determine the user activity. So. From here, we have the top 10 answers used by the customers. So we identified that uh, uh, Huawei was the, uh, there's the leading device, then followed by Apple's devices, uh, most of them. So we, we can identify that Apple's iPhone. The Apple's were, were the top 10 most used, uh, mostly six out of 10. And uh, Huawei, even though ranked first, we can we can see that our users are different, have different likings for the devices. So the top 10 answers used by customers, we have, we have, uh, we have, um, yeah, sorry for this. Uh, so we have to, the, the top three handsets user at the manufacturers of the handsets. So the top three were, uh, Apple was the uh, leading and then it was followed by Samsung, then Huawei. So here, Apple dominates the the market, and then we can we can identify that also most uh the more than half of it was Android users uh, among the top three. So there's a there's a some some balance, and we we here we are looking at the top five answers for each uh, com uh company here for Apple. We can identify that the the most used was iphone and then uh going to samsung we can see that samsung has uh uh we have this eight here but uh compared to iphones we, we can see that uh, there's a also a balance uh some kind of balance here with the with the devices almost equal to each other with the number of users and for the top five answers for away we can identify that uh there's a shooting the in the first uh 
handset that is our AB52 ATS uh, and the rest so we can notice that most users are using this device almost more than 7500 users and then we can move on the user BV analysis of the various apps here we are going to identify the activity on the different uh, social media uh, the applications including social media YouTube and Netflix and we can identify uh, the data used and sessions by user so uh, for for handling the missing values and outliers in the session uh, since the data was more skewed uh, I used the median to to uh, to you know replace the outliers and for the downloaded data the outliers also were well rightly skewed most of them are laid on the on the left uh no no on the right with the this shows that significant number of users consumed lower amounts of data so that is uh, on the right graph and the missing values are handled them using the mean so you can identify the relationship uh i I didn't have a visualization for this, but uh, here we, we identified that the, there was a highest correlation between uh, social media and the other, the, that is the other applications. So this was the uh, high, highest uh, correlation. The lowest was Netflix and other with a negative correlation. So here we can see that uh, increase in usage by Netflix uh, may correspond to slightly decrease in usage of other applications and the rest were close to zero. So this indicates that there was no, some relationship with, between total usage and the apps. Uh, so here we can see the top three most used applications. These were, uh, here we can see that email was the top three most used, then, then uh, gaming, uh, and then also the other applications. But you can, you can identify that uh, social media and Google did not perform badly. Uh, top three most used applications were also uh, here. You can also see the gaming was one of the most used applications, uh, having like more users. Uh, but the data was uh, this was talking about the the data that it used uh, didn't use much of the traffic, but uh, less of that. Uh, so the so the user experience analytics we. Uh, here we are going to see how the overall experience of the user was. Uh, we have the top 10 most frequent values in the average bearer. These are uh, these are the download, uh, the average throughput uh, and uplink values. We can have the top 10 here, uh, but the most frequent for the downlink throughput were close to zero. Uh, this indicated that most users, uh, users used a uh, low, low data rate. Uh, for the for the most frequent values in average uh, at TT, this is the average round trip, and the top ten values were mostly negative. This indicated that uh, there are some large. Yes, you have to go faster just for the sake of time. Uh, it's okay. Um, let me rush. Uh, so there's top ten most values um, for the average pair. So we can understand the customer satisfaction. We are, here we have the distribution and we can see that uh, there was a moderate, these were the highest, but moderate was satisfied. And uh, average experience and satisfaction score, uh, there were the clusters with the highest values, uh, that was cluster zero and uh, followed by two and three. Uh, so building the satisfaction database, these were the values of the satisfaction database. Uh, most of them were centralized for the satisfaction data. Uh, so for the for, uh, for the final slides, we can an, analyze the opportunity. We have the summary. We we notice what Apple and Huawei were the highest devices, and uh, the implications that uh, the company should focus more on Apple and Huawei. Uh, the risk assessments we can see uh, uh, the the highest. Um, the network performance issues could require upgrades and the low engagement can indicate customer dissatisfaction and that will lead to probably not acquisition. So the recommendation for acquisition was uh, we, we recommended uh, uh, for buying 
the tel telco company and uh there's there was opportunity for growth considering apple and Royal were the most two devices we could leverage on that mm -hmm. and the overall assessment was that uh the the there's a growth potential for acquiring telco and the conclusion is that uh, we have the summary findings apple and huawei and uh there's an improvement you can improve on the overall network performance and the call to action is uh there's some opportunity for expansion in the markets uh and that's it all thank you great thanks i think again um yeah so it seems there are there is some alignment with uh some presentations where they say in terms of engagement or satisfaction is low but at least in terms of the the change um that one is explainable in a way like i think your reasoning and uh, probably the first person since you and mrs presentation for example it's similar but the recommendations are different and I, you know that's a natural one because you you think like the risk out like the opportunity outweighs the risk while in the case of Johannes, for example the risk outweighs the opportunity these are simple but again as i said um some things are slightly different with other presentations Maybe you guys can reconcile. Uh, Tedros, yeah. Tedros. Tedros, if you are speaking, you are muted. Okay. So. Okay. So in the interest of time, we will stop here. Um, and but for the next one, I would require the others who hasn't spoken today to be able to speak. And also, as far as I understand, there will be more sessions that you at least have to present to the tutors uh, along the way. Is there another arrangement? Maybe anyone in the tut from tutors? Did we? How, how do we plan to make everyone speak? Present. I'm Tina Rahmet or Nathaniel. Okay. So they can reach out to us if they want to present and we can help. Uh, some kind but of my schedule. understanding was that everyone should present it's uh so maybe we will communicate just after after arranging my understanding was that then some who raised hands will present here and others will present to each for different tutors so that we can finish um along this week or today that was my understanding but my, that may not be the case so we will okay. um we'll yeah, arrange. We with us as, as well so yeah okay yeah so we'll arrange and, and communicate but just for now, given that we have to uh, go to the other session, which is the challenge walkthrough for this week. So let's stop it here and maybe stop recording. And maybe it's easier if we just continue along the way. Um, instead of, like, unless it's uh, necessary that we all quit and then come back. Yes, I would, uh, for the sake of separate would, recordings, okay. we have to leave and then join again. Join again. Okay, so let's just all leave this session and then come back again uh, in su such that